Hey everyone, today on stream our goal is going to be trying to make the most budget Elliot character as possible. In my last video I apparently made a lot of people butt hurt, so I've decided to throw those guys a bone and we're going to see exactly how cheap of a character we can make. And the goal is going to be to clear T16 maps and Conquerors with Awakener 9 level of health. Uh, hopefully on under a 10x budget, but we'll sort of see how we go. I'm going to track all the costs I incur. Um, including all the gems I purchase, or all the other support gems I'm planning on just buying and leveling up, and we're going to see what we can, how far we can get it in a single stream. I'm going to be keeping track of the cost of all the cluster jewels, the costs incurred to roll flasks, uh, absolutely everything. So we're going to just start a fresh character from scratch and see what we can do with it, pretty much. So let's uh, let's see how it goes, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. So, stream's over. We accomplished what we were planning to accomplish on under 8 exalts. Um, I'm going to include all the gameplay footage at the end of this video, so you can just skip ahead and watch that first if that's what you kind of want, but for the meantime, I'm just going to sort of get out of the way what we ended up running for our setup, and then I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that breaks down the running cost of all our items. So, to start with, we ran a Death's Opus 6 Link Bow. Um, we used Ballista Totem support, Elemental Focus, Hypothermia, Barrage, Elemental Damage with Attacks, and Elemental Hit. And this is our single target setup. For our clear setup, we ran 5 Penetration Support with Elemental Damage with Attacks, Chain Support, Mirage Archer, Inspiration, and Elemental Hit again. So, that's this, and then the single target are the Totems, right? Which, uh, if you've seen any of my other early hit videos, you know what that's about and why. But you can also, again, go forward to the uh, game footage and you'll see for yourself. Alright, as for our quiver, now, it looks like a bit of an insane quiver, but it's actually really cheap. You can craft this very easily with about, I'd say, 40c worth of fossils and resonators. And I'm just going to quickly show you that before we move into anything else. So, once you've prepared three socket resonators with metallic, corroded, and serrated fossils, you get additional arrows plus the other things that you want quite frequently, and I'll, I'll just show you that. So, we'll hit it once. Okay, we didn't hit it. Quite, okay. So on the second hit already, we've got additional arrow, we've got a really low life roll, which isn't a big deal, but an open prefix to craft um, elemental damage with attacks. We got T2 crit chance, T6 crit multi, and then some decks. Probably gonna roll over this, I'll just show you a few more. So we'll hit it again. Here we got additional, we got movement speed, additional arrow, life, attack speed, crit chance, accuracy. You'd probably keep this, although you it doesn't have crit multi, a quiver like this could easily sell for a couple of exalts. And it's going to save you a lot of money just running something like that, even without the multi. The, the extra accuracy means you here means you get to save um, points on the tree or run a low level precision. Let's just do a couple more times so you can sort of see. All right, here we go again. T1 crit multi, you got accuracy, crit chance, mana gained on hit, and additional arrow, plus room to craft life. All right, uh, again, life, additional arrow, crit chance, dex. Okay, something we'd roll over. And I'll just do a few more hits. I'm sure you get the idea from uh, what you're seeing here. See, another really good bow. Okay, so that's that. I've included the filters for that in the spreadsheet, but we'll get to that later. Um, for the rest of our setup, we ran an unenchanted Asanas chant. Um, we ran a Zoff's Blood with a Lava Lush anointment on it. We ran... Oh wait, we've shown you the quiver already. We ran the Pyre Ring. Now the logic behind the Pyre Ring, and of course you have to put 20% worth of Turbulent Catalyst onto it, but the logic behind this is that with Anger, you're fully converting pretty much the cold damage that Elemental Hit does to fire damage. And so this ring on its own is worth about something like 10 to 12% more DPS. But because it reads at the bottom, ignited enemies killed by, your, uh, killed by your hits are destroyed, you do not have to run a large cluster jewel that has Cremator on it. So being able to run a second bow cluster jewel with Feed the Fury and Martial Prowess, this can be up to another 10% damage depending on your cluster setup, and it's going to save you a lot of money because the Cremator cluster jewels are fairly expensive. So moving on, uh, as for this body armor, what happened here? I bought a 6 linked Hunter body armor for one exalt. Uh, it just happened to have the enchant on it, though this is a very easy to obtain enchant. And if you just look here, like uh, we're very close to being uh, kept on firers. If I didn't have that enchant, I would just pick up less lightning rays on some other item and get more fire res. So that enchant's not really crucial to have or anything like that. Um, as you can see, it's tier two attacks have uh, additional crit chance, not tier one. 
Uh, we just Alkin scoured this like 30 times or so until I hit um, a decent attack of crit chance with either life or res. And because this hit T3 life and T3 res on a high roll of T2 attack crit, I decided to just keep it and run with it. So, nothing special there. We have Dark Ray Vectors, extremely budget item. It's not enchanted, but you can get them with enchants very cheap. And then we just got a really cheap set of um, gloves that have a plus one frenzy charge enchant, uh, sorry, corrupt on it. Now these gloves happened to cost me, if, uh, okay, so these ones cost me 3C. So this is really, really, really budget. Really doesn't matter what you get, as long as it has plus one frenzy charges, all the other stats on it are absolute bonuses, right? In this case, we've got a really nice attack accuracy rating roll, so, and we got some life on res, you know, which is pretty good. Okay, um, the last two items that you're gonna get for this build are your ring and your Stygian Vies. Now, the reason you are going to leave these last is because the amount of res you get on your body armor and your gloves will vary depending on how much money you're willing to spend. So, and given that the last ring and the belt are the weakest slots in the build, you kind of want to leave them to last to sort of figure out exactly how much resist they need to have and how much money you want to spend on these. So in the case of my ring, it cost me 5C to buy this ring and then another 3C to put that. non channeling skills have minus seven to total mana cost on it. And then in the case of the belt, this belt was literally a 2C belt, right? All this was done on stream, right? So no, none of this was done off stream. I'm just making up the prices. We did all this on stream. So you can watch the VOD if you want or ask someone who saw the stream. Um, and then this is a fairly cheap Abyssal Jewel. I believe it cost us 1C. I have included a filter for it. Now, as for our flasks, you have the option of running a Quicksilver or a Phasing Flask in your first slot. You can either move faster or have extra dodge. That's entirely up to you. Uh, we have a Dying Sun. This costs 10C. Seething Life Flask of Staunching, right? This is pretty standard. Most builds have this that are life-based. Cinder Swallow Own cost us 30C, and then the Diamond Flask was practically free, although we wasted a bunch of ults rolling it for warning. Okay, and now we'll get into the tree. So I put a Damage Penetrates 1% Elemental Resistance's Combat Focus into this slot. This cost 9C. I put the other one here, Uncorrupted, for 1C. Then I have a Anger Crit Multi, Watcher's Eye. This cost us 30C. These are really cheap at the moment, and I would highly recommend getting those. As for our cluster setup, we're running non min max to large clusters that have Martial Prowess and Feed the Fury. Feed the Fury is a very overpowered node, um, but the condition is that you have to be leeching all the time. With the Ballista based setup, you're always leeching because you can always just drop a single totem, which is going to cost 36 mana, and due to the one point of mana leech here, you can always be basically never at full mana but never quite out of mana either just as long as you're when you're getting to full mana you slap down a totem so it, it's very comfortable to sort of sit in the leeching range with this and this counts while you're leeching life or mana so as long as you're never at full mana you're always benefiting from this so we run two of these large clusters and then as for our medium clusters we run a special filter now i'll show you i'll go through those real quick so this is the large i've included the uh, link in the spreadsheet that i'm going to share with you guys so that you can see uh, there's one for 15C and the rest are sort of like 20C. All right, and then the medium one. So for the medium one, I decided to just look up any combination of these five notables. And the reason for that is because all of these provide about four to 5% DPS. So I wasn't really fussed on having the absolute best ones. I just wanted good ones. So as you can see, 22C, 25C, 30C, 30C. Uh, we bought ours for 20c and I guess some people on stream saw it and may have purchased some others so the price has gone up a little bit but not really that big a deal and price hasn't gone up by much. Then for our small jewel sockets we've just put uh, crit multi jewels in there I've prepared special filters for that as well and that looks like this as you can see life up here then a crit multi roll and then strength or int. And the reason we run Strength or Int on pretty much all of them is because it prevents you from having to spend a point here or here to meet your Int and Strength requirements. As you can see, as you can see the gems here, as the jewels here are pretty cheap. Alright, so, as for the tree itself, it's a very standard tree. Right, no, nothing here is really out of the ordinary except for taking watchtowers here. I'll include this entire POB so that you can copy it for yourself as well. Um, Watchtowers is absolutely necessary to take. A lot of other builds will take Primeval Force, and if this character could get to 99, it would probably take Primeval Force as well. 
but those are the points you'd pull out for this. And if you were even lower level than 95, you would just uh, run less life in the build, right? This life is total overkill. As you can see, even on this budget setup, we were still leveling up pretty much the entire time. And this is at 95, right? We're, we're not, not dying, not even coming close to dying in most cases. As for your ascendancies, you have two options. You can either run Rapid Assault and Avatar of the Chase, or you can run Rapid Assault with Quartz Infusion. I really wouldn't recommend running Avatar of the Veil. Vale. I personally think it's pretty overrated. I know it does have its uses, um, but basically the exposure that we get is only 5% more than the Wave of Conviction that we end up running in our utility setup. So, and then the less accuracy isn't really a problem considering we already have, or well, it's not really worth it, sorry, considering that we already have 75% attack dodge. Um, and then elemental ailment immunity is very overrated for a build that's aiming never to get hit. For a melee based build in hardcore, I would say this is insane and one of the strongest nodes in the entire game. But for what we're doing, we're not really planning on being hit, so having immunity to those things is kind of overrated. On the other hand, you're either getting Giga, Giga Dodge and Perma Increased Onslaught, or you're getting even more Onslaught effect, which is really good. So uh, that, that's what I'd be running for the tree. I'm going to include the POB for everything um, in the description of this video. I'm also going to include the POB of my character when it's more at a mid-range setup. I included it in the last video too, but some of you may not have seen that. So, And that, that'll just show you where to sort of take your character from there. All right, and I'll just go quickly run through the utility setup that we have in our uh, other gems. So I'm running Dash with Second Wind and Ensnaring Arrow. Ensnaring Arrow is really important, and for some reason a lot of the early hit builds that I'm seeing going around aren't including Ensnaring Hit. Ensnaring Hit is basically a 20% more damage multiplier, except for the fact that it stacks additively with the Sniper's Mark debuff, but... They combine, basically, so that cursed enemies are taking 60% uh, increased damage overall. So, very strong to have this, and costs almost no mana. So when you get to a Conqueror, you can place down your four totems, and then just shoot and snaring arrow until the Conqueror becomes active, and you won't have any mana problems or anything like that. As for our SNFs, we're running Wave of Conviction with Combustion Support and Sniper's Mark. I'm putting Portal in here because I like to, but you can put Power Charge on Crit or Lightning Golem. Doesn't really matter. Uh, for our Auras, we're running a level 1 Precision with level 13 Skitterbots, level 20 Anger. Um, the reason Skitterbots is level 13 is just because I haven't leveled it up full yet. So, nothing really special going on here. It's just some of these gems aren't leveled up because uh, I've only played with them for a limited amount of time. And we ran level 3 in Leiden. Now, in a more min-max setup, you're probably going to have level 4 in Leiden. And you may have a higher level precision, and that would save you points on the tree having to take a QD like this. Right? Um, but you can see that in the more advanced POB. So, last thing that I wanted to really touch on is the spreadsheet that I prepared. So, the spreadsheet just goes through the prices of all the things uh, in the build. Now... Some of these prices are inflated from what I actually ended up spending on stream. I wanted to be a little more on the conservative side. Realistically, you could put together what I put together probably on under 7 exalts, but being conservative, we've bumped it up to about 7.9. So I'm going to call this basically an 8 exalt budget. And in an absolute worst case scenario where this video were to take off and a lot of people were to jump on this particular bandwagon, this price still isn't going to come close to 10 exalts, in my opinion. So, this is a real build. Now, finally, I will get the POB of this character up. So, let's just um, move those nodes over here. Essentially, I, I think I may need to fix up some of the gems in here. Let me just double check for you. Okay, we'll, we'll bump that down. Okay, so this particular setup, it was pretty much a straight upload of my character, although I had to move a couple of things around because this was a different version, slightly different version we were playing on stream. And this one is running extra dodge. So if you see when I run this, my DPS goes up even further. But basically with the dodge setup, we're getting to 5.6 million shape of DPS, right? So 
shock, 15 percent shock effect it's actually a little higher with skitterbots but i'm just going to count it as 15. we have one in snare stack enemy is ignited enemy is chilled fire exposure is applied we're using frenzy charges we could be using power charges if i didn't have the portal on cast thing but no big deal there we have onslaught of course um, and we're always leeching so your total DPS with all your ballistas down while you're firing off skills is going to be 5.6 million DPS against bosses such as Cirrus, Uber Elder, Shaper, etc. Maven as well. Okay, so I'm just going to let the gameplay video, uh, the gameplay footage play after this and uh, you can sort of see what it looks like. We get some pretty fast Conqueror kills down. I was actually really impressed with how this build performs. Um, the clips that you're going to see are split between the dodge focused uh, version which moves a little slower and then the onslaught focus version which runs like a quicksilver and then the full onslaught tree going into avatar of the chase and that moves a lot faster i didn't die on neither of them and we've got some pretty decent uh, boss and conqueror kills on both of them they were both able to take on ultimatums without any buff stealing tools um if i was really interested in playing this on a budget i might have included uh inspired learning here and taken heart like moved things around to take heart seeker and put the inspired learning here but basically without buff stealing we still do ritual we did ultimatum, we did some legions, we did a bunch of bosses, conquerors, um, and you'll, you'll see all that sort of stuff. I was really impressed with how strong this build was on its budget. Um, a lot of people are basically still playing early hit at you know, a 50 to 100 exalt budget, and for sure they're getting more DPS than what you're seeing here, but this is even without flasks. So if we turn flasks on, you can see it comes up to 8.6 million DPS. You know, it's a, it's quite a potent build for the prices here. One final disclaimer, do not league start this build. As much as this is impressive DPS on a budget for a hit-based bow build, the reality is that this is only possible because of the time of the league. These prices are going to be massive, massively inflated at the start of a league, and even if it were to only cost 8x, that would still be pretty rough for a league starter. It would be doable, but the reality is it's probably probably going to be closer to 20 plus exalts on the start of a league. You know, there are just certain things such as Dying Sun, it costs 10c at the moment, but on a league start it's going to cost 1x. Cinder Swallow costs 30c at the moment, but on a league start it's going to cost 2x. And Anger, Crit Multi Watcher's Eye is going to cost upwards of 1x. Zoss Blood is going to cost 2 to 3x, for example. Athenas Chant may cost 2 to 3x. Your Death's Opus 6 link is going to cost probably a couple of decks. So just stuff like that, it's going to more than double the price. And this just is not even close to being League Starter viable, in my opinion. So don't League Start this build. And if you do, don't be upset with me. Um, anyway, if you liked what you saw, give, uh, give me a like and a subscribe. Come follow me on my stream. We're always uh, checking out fun stuff like this on the stream. And looking at min-maxing characters in ways other people haven't. Uh, if you have any problems with what you've seen or you think that something has been misrepresented, I really invite you to just come to the stream and ask about it. I'd be happy to demonstrate this character doing something that you wanted to see being done. Um, I think that's much more constructive than some of the comments left in the last video of people who are just really, really, really upset that I claimed this build could be done on a budget and I happen to have a headhunter equipped during boss skills, which doesn't make much sense to me, but uh, it, it, it upset a lot of people. So anyway, have a good one, guys. I'll catch us in the next one.